My brothers and sisters in Christ, today's gospel passage contains, if you will, two separate nuggets, one of which is more familiar uh, to, to most people, the, the, the parable of the, the mustard seed. But I'd like to draw our attention to the first component, this image to which Jesus compares the kingdom of God as if a man were to, to scatter seed and go to sleep. In a sense, so beyond the wording of the actual gospel passage, essentially describes the silent, undetectable growth. And in modern terms, we can compare this, even if we're not a farmer, to the grass growing in our front yard, or the, the growing of our hair, or our fingernails, or something. Things that grow and develop that change, but in such a way that it's not perceptible to the human mind or eye. And in this, Jesus describes the way that God works. He describes that these things happen. In a sense, we know they happen, but we don't see them happen. In a sense, we don't immediately comprehend their happening. And yet, God in his grandeur makes them happen. All of creation, the way nature has been set forth, makes it happen. And this is a beautiful reflection because... For us, we often reflect on the need for humility or, in a sense, to, to give up control. But there's many forms in which this comes in. We struggle enough with the idea of just letting go, of, of acknowledging that God is in control and we are not uh, of certain things. That is a big enough struggle. But even if we somehow bring ourselves to accept that reality, in a sense, a, a more subtle form uh, of our pride and need for control is this to, to need to know, even if we're not doing, even if we're not controlling to know what's happening. If we think to the eagerness of a child who just with curiosity, it constantly asks, what are you doing? What are you doing? In a sense, we want to ask God, okay, I can't control this, so God, you tell me how you're controlling it, how you're doing this. How will you make this happen? How will you make things right? How will you control this outcome? In a sense, we want God to answer to us, to, to reveal to us, uh, all, all the mysteries of his providence. And this is not for us to know. The only time in which this will all be known to us is at the end, when all things will be revealed, when God speaks the final word over creation. All things will then be known to us. But until that time, he asks us to place our trust in him. Place our trust in him that he is God and we are not. The grass grows, our hair grows, our fingernails grow. We may not be able to detect it with our eye, and yet to God it all makes sense. God is working in creation, and God is even working in us, in me at this moment, in my soul. His grace, the divine physician, if we think with the precision of the scalpel's edge that a surgeon, a doctor works, something very fine, God is working at a level much more precise and subtle than even that. He's constantly working for our good. He's working to carefully untie the snares that we create for ourselves to make all things work for the good uh, for those who love him, as the scripture tells us. And so, this scripture passage is a beautiful invitation for us to not only let go of our need to control, but let go of our need to understand, at least in terms of intellect, to let go of the need to know, to understand everything that God is doing, and instead to simply put our trust that it is done. And the one who promises is trustworthy. In the scripture he says, I have promised and I will do it, says the Lord. God has made us promises that he works for our good, God has made the promise of his mercy, and so he is constantly at work in us and in all of creation. And the invitation today is rest. Let go, place your trust in God, let him know your needs, and then trust him to follow through. May God bless you all.